Hollywood. It has become a multi-billion dollar film industry, creating some of the most well-known and cherished female actors and characters. However, despite Hollywood popularity, many female characters characters and actors are typecasted within big blockbuster films such as Marvel and DC. Many reflect directors' personal preferences or physical and ethnical appearances of women, therefore creating an unrealistic false representation of women within society. Many female actors are forced to lose unhealthy amounts of weight for film roles, causing unhealthy body image for women in society. It also creates a false image of what beauty is, having the potential to mislead men and women on how women should look and act like. Marvel and DC are two of the most popular Hollywood film productions, hindering superheroes such as DC's Wonder Woman. To the outside view, Wonder Woman is a badass and holds many talents promoting herself as a strong female character, but alongside other DC and Marvel superheroes, she has a very fr- thin frame and wears revealing clothes, showing off most of her body. She experiences heartbreak and the need for a relationship with a man in films, which further creates the stereotype that women need a masculine heterosexual relationship. Cyclo and other Marvel female superheroes are well known for being dressed in body tight latex or leather outfits, showing off their strong superhero bodies. Even though many actors who play such superheroes undergo intense training to build muscle, the characters they play are dressed in outfits showing their breast thighs and most of their body. Despite this having the ability to empower the female body, many women who view such Hollywood films are taught a misleading representation of how their body should look. Throughout history, the female physique has undergone a series of changes on what body type is deemed beautiful. At the time of the Italian Renaissance, most of the bodies were ideal at the time with full face and full figured. However, from the 1920s flapping now through to the 1950s age of Hollywood, women started to be pressurised and to have an hourglass figure. More modern views on beauty entail women having thin figures, which many women are unable to achieve. To understand how hard it is for Gal Gadot, who plays Wonder Woman, to build her figure, I researched her diet and workout regime. Beginning, <laughs> like you know, they cook for you and everything is super delicious. But after, I would say after a few weeks, you you so over the food and it becomes a task. Yeah. Uh, chicken again, uh, eggs. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, but you just feel better you feel stronger i started this journey uh you know they cast me when when i was super skinny Mm -hmm. and i never knew what it how it feels to be you know to be built and to be really really strong and it felt really good so despite gal dotes finding that her role in wonder woman helped her mental and physical health many people don't have the access to a personal trainer every day to achieve a body like wonder woman However, despite some Hollywood female actors having roles that have the ability to show positive representations of women, the majority of Hollywood directors are men, and their ideals of how women should act is centered around the ideas they see women should act accordingly to, such as female subordination and sexualization. The majority of lead roles in Hollywood films are given to men, who have more script, thus give a misleading representation that men are more dominant in films, therefore society. Films reflect the idea that men are leaders and women help them along the way, but in most Hollywood plots, women need the helping hand by men to succeed. Princess Leia is one of the most iconic characters in Star Wars. However, within this scene, she is dressed in nothing but a biki- bikini, captive by Jabba the Hutt. By her side, an alien tentacle closely resembling something quite phallic and is chained and there's chains around her neck. This scene has always been deemed one of many boys' fantasies, but behind the scenes it creates negative body image for women and over sexualization, which has the potential to create dangerous fantasies for men.
So the facts remain that Hollywood films hinder great inequality between male and female leading roles, but even more so is seen in the equality of ethnic minority actors, especially female ethnic minority actors, many of whom are typecasted to play stereotypical negative roles within Hollywood films. This is A.O. Scott. Maids, butlers, waiters, porters. In the 1930s and 40s, Hollywood offered African-American actors few roles beyond servile ones. Come on, right away, wrap it up. Was you asking for me, Miss Allen? The film historian Donald Bogle has called the 30s the age of the Negro servant, and the careers of great performers like Clarence Muse and Teresa Harris confirm this marginality. Too often, these actors were not even credited. Someone's going to insult you today if you get out of bed. The off-screen reality was always more complex. However demeaning the roles, they also sustained careers for performers who belonged to another Hollywood, one that included behind-the-scenes activism and the ongoing struggle for creative autonomy. Clarence Muse, often cast as butler or a porter, collaborated with the poet Langston Hughes on the script and the songs for Way Down South, released by RKO in 1939, the same year as Gone with the Wind. I know you're trying to do the best you can for Mars Tim. I'm trying to do best I can for him too, sir. Gone with the Wind is a regressive fantasy, of course, but as Bogle points out, its black actors transformed their slaves into complex human beings. Hattie McDaniel, who plays Mammy, became the first African-American actor to win an Oscar, but at the time she was also harshly criticized for helping to perpetuate negative representations. Oh, now, Miss Scarlett, you could... McDaniel's complicated legacy is that she made Mammy more than just a caricature. Hattie McDaniel is the most famous of three siblings who appeared frequently in the old Hollywood. Her brother, Sam, had more than 200 roles to his name, many uncredited. Their sister, Etta, can be seen, however briefly, in films like Son of Dracula. Working within a white supremacist system, the McDaniels and other black performers did what they could to infuse their limited roles with artistry and dignity. Even as modern audiences cringe at these stereotypes, it is possible to appreciate the artists who played them. And sometimes, what we see in a movie like the RKO Western, The Arizonian, suggests a whole other dimension to the story. She was the first black woman to be nominated for an Academy Award for Best Actress. Refusing to be typecast, Dorothy Dandridge vowed never to play a slave on screen. Ten years later, acting roles had dried up and Dandridge was dead of a drug overdose with little more than two dollars to her name. When a black actor wins an Oscar or is nominated, in my opinion, I think Hollywood is sometimes not known what to do with them because the path isn't clear. Of the nearly 3,000 Oscars that have been awarded since 1929, fewer than 30 have been given to people of color. I told you and told you. Many of them for roles based on true stories, therefore could never have been played by white actors anyway. It's not like Leonardo DiCaprio could play Nelson Mandela. One of the only ways where black people get to play the lead is literally where there is no white competition. David Oyelowo played Louis Gaines in The Butler, a movie about an African-American White House butler who served eight American presidents. Pam Williams, one of the movie's producers, says that some investors refused to fund it unless she gave the white actors bigger roles. One potential investor asked, could we give the butler a white best friend? I don't think the investors we went to were racist when they said these things. I think, again, they buy into the myth that is white people want to see white people on screen, so how can we put more of them into a black movie to make it more acceptable? And more marketable. According to RentTrack, a company that tracks movie ticket sales, only five predominantly black movies have made over $100 million domestically. So, what is to be done about this great inequality and false representation within Hollywood? I took it to myself to personally reflect the thoughts on what I felt is currently happening within the industry and what Hollywood should be doing to correct the problems. Please excuse the sassy as fuck picture. So get ready for some pretty ingenious stuff guys.
Hello everybody, um, I hope everyone's been all right. Um, this was meant to be an interview that I was going to conduct with a number of my uh, sociologist friends and coursemates and a few of my friends. Uh, it's a personal matter to a lot of my female friends. So um, I'm just going to start off and give you a bit of personal opinion on what I think Hollywood industry has done and what has to be taken forward from this uh, to kind of mend the problem. Um, I just think, first off, that Hollywood fucked up. Uh, they did big time. Uh, even though the films that they make are really, really good, and I love the films, so I'm not trying to be biased, but um, they did make a big problem uh, from the start because of the casting and because of who runs it. It's very well met very very merely uh male merely uh male orientated uh and that creates big problems because lead roles and lead scripts are given to men and it makes this big inequality uh within films and a lot of women are given sidelining roles uh and that is a problem because it reflects that kind of image the men are more dominant in society which just isn't true uh but you know, like as in like socially they're not, but unfortunately you see society reflect these these leading roles uh, because men have got these leading careers. So you see this inequality in films that's reflected in society, which is a huge problem. Uh, another big problem is the ethnic minority uh, kind of inequalities, especially with female, uh, any ethnic minority uh, actors. They have a huge lack in any kind of role in big boss that blockbuster Hollywood films but especially um, when it comes to for example you do get a lead black actor and it is only because there is no white competition as we've seen before in this in some interviews um, when it comes to females and female actors you very rarely will see a black ethnic minority any kind of minority actress uh, play a lead role and it's it is this kind of inbuilt social racism and um it has a change and i think one of the things you have to do is you just have to i mean it's it's bigger than me it's gonna take a whole kind of institutional change and political change and social reorganization of hollywood and that film industry to change it um, Another problem within Hollywood films that you see this big inequality that within especially Wonder Woman, I will have to talk about her, is that she is a really, really good character, uh, reflects some really big positive things about her. But in her uh, film, she falls in love with a man and that makes her less powerful. It kind of like um, dilutes her power. You know, she becomes really emotional she um, can't function right, there's some sort of drive that makes her less powerful and less strong. And it's a big thing that you see in a lot of these Hollywood films, is that there can't just be a single woman or woman on her way or whatever. It's a heterosexual relationship especially, um, and it compromises her. Uh, and that is just kind of an unfair thing, and it brings this whole stereotype that women are emotional, and they can't think right and all this kind of blah 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 nonsense and it's just fucking annoying uh, because being in a relationship is great and it does make you weaker being single doesn't make you weaker you know and i think both these things should be reflected positively in hollywood as they are in society um things aren't clear cut people have problems in both ways but hollywood's got a tendency to always stereotype them in these relationships you see it in men as well. Men become weaker when they're in a when they're in a relationship, more kind of compromise. It just needs to stop because it's just not true. It's just unfair. Uh, it kind of reflects the the opinion that women will weaken a man's power, and it's sort of just like no, right, no. The last thing I'm going to just touch on is the change that I think needs to happen. I think needs to be institutional, political, legislational, whatever. Directors need to change more female directors, uh, just a completely different attitude on ethnic minorities especially, this whole kind of stereotypical role, like every film has the same plot, the same kind of dynamic and it needs to change. Um, so yeah, that's my opinion. If any of you have any ideas, please let me know 
um, obviously I can't change it but I'm gonna try and let you guys know um, yes anyway I hope everyone's staying well and yeah all right bye so there you guys are I hope this short film has helped you understand the misleading representations Hollywood creates for women. I hope my personal interview was alright, <laughs> but the important thing to understand from this is the industry is changing slowly. It takes clever and strong-minded people to drive these changes further. I hope that everyone is staying safe and healthy. Bye everybody!